Daddy up. is back! Yay! How was the snorkeling session? Oh, it was good. Visibility is terrible because of all the waves and stuff. There's quite a few trigger fish and a few other little fish. Nothing like super big, but that's okay. I'm not going after super big stuff anyway. One trigger Ooh, fish. Look at him. Two trigger fish. Oh, that's exciting. They're beautiful. And a little uh, strawberry grouper. He's not as big. And Corey's already attracting the sharks. Okay. See how he's lit up. Just sharpen these knives bad. <laughs> oh, boy, the diapers, please. But normally I'd fillet a fish, but with these trigger fish, they have really, really. Um, tough scales. So I saw some locals um, skinning them. So I think the idea is you just get enough of the skin off and then you can kind of grab it and peel it away from the meat. But anyway, I don't quite have the technique, but it's working a lot better than filleting them. Friendly sharks are just going around. They want your fish, my love. <laughs> what are you doing, sweetie? You're trying to help daddy fillet? <laughs> well, that can work out. Yeah. Awesome. So the locals will skin the entire fish. There's some meat in the cheeks and stuff. But I've been told that the heads tend to have more chances of secretaire and stuff. And there's really not that much meat in there anyway. But some people really like it. So there's that as an option. But I think I figured out the technique. Uh, it might be easier to start in the front, but I'm starting in the back. I'm also using this knife instead of a fillet knife because I don't want to destroy my fillet knife. You just cut down into the skin. And then it's really tough in the middle here, but if you get the skin peeled up a little bit, or you just kind of cut the skin back a little bit, then hold on to the tail, get your fingers in there, and just peel away. It's not easy, but it's certainly easier than trying to fillet these type of fish. And you can get your fingers in underneath and kind of work the skin away from the meat. And just cut away as you need. And Coral is loving watching the sharks. Yes, I'm talking about you. The requins are so good. So good, the requins. And now she's watching daddy. After I get the skin off, it makes it way easier to fillet. Well, he's all done. Look at the chompers, uh, the coral chompers on this guy. It's crazy. Yeah, they, you don't they, want your fingers they, in here? They look like a predatory fish, but they just chomp on, chomp on coral. Welcome to Wally Intrepid. I'm Alex, and this is Corey. Three years ago, we sailed south from Canada as newbie sailors. Now we share our love of travel with our baby girl, Coral, as we explore new areas of the Bahamas. Join us for our weekly adventure. Pesto, pasta, and blackened triggerfish. Oh man, that looks good. I'm glad you enjoy it and thank you for catching it. It's kind of nice having one last um, spearfishing adventure, beach adventure. <gasps> no, no, no! Coral wants it too. 
Are you excited about this passage? I don't know. I don't think so, actually. I'm excited to get it done and over with, but it's going to be a long passage. So tonight overnight, we're going to do a jump from the North and Berry Islands all the way to almost West End, mm. which is on Great Abaco Island. So that's going to be a good 90 some nautical miles, which turns into about 18 hours. I know she's going to need me a lot, which is normal, mm. but I'm just really hoping that she doesn't get too seasick because it's going to be all downwind sailing pretty much with some waves. So that's not her favorite angle of sail. And then once we get there, we're pretty much just going to get a little rest. If everything goes well, we've got good wind. The Gulf Stream is pushing us forward or north and she's doing OK. We might do a jump all the way to St. Augustine, which is another 250 or so nautical miles. Right. So we're going to see how everything goes because it's not quite the same. Hmm? Corey handles the boat by himself almost, mm. and I take care of Coral. So it's just, yes. ooh, don't hit your head. So it's a little harder on all of us, those kind of crossings. Smaller jumps are better, so I'm a bit apprehensive to see how everything goes. But it's gonna get done. We are well within hurricane season. We're in July, so we've got to get back to the US now. Prepping some chili for our crossing. Conditions for spearfishing on the exposed side of Soldier K were not ideal to say the least. It was a bumpy ride out and with all the waves above, the visibility was pretty low. But that could not stop me from getting one final spearfishing session in. This area quickly became one of my favorite spearfishing spots. You did it again. Oh, I'm so happy. All season I've been hoping to get some hogfish and I haven't seen very many. I saw a couple on scuba, which we can't spear on scuba. And I saw one or two smaller than this and I don't really like spearing anything smaller than that. That's kind of the minimum size. And yeah, today I saw five of them, missed three. <laughs> which uh, was a little frustrating because they're normally like point blank shots. But I missed three and I was able to get these two, so I'm really excited about that. My problem with missing them, I think, was my spear band is getting a little bit uh, less stretch in it. So I gotta really extend the spear band all the way. And yeah, anyway, I figured it out and now we get to eat some wonderful hogfish. It's definitely my favorite fish. That and porgies are like the most delicious meat. I love it. Yum. Leave me alone. What are you doing there? I am trying not to die. Those things kind of hurt. They're very spiky. I'm trying. One of our viewers on YouTube suggested that we try eating those cactus. And since we don't have any fresh produce whatsoever on board. No, actually that's not true. I do have bananas and apples. But we don't have any veggies anymore. We decided to give it a go, but there's all these like thorns that hurt so bad that they, uh, when I was trying to retrieve them from the island, they were just jabbing me in my fingers. So now I'm just getting rid of all the thorns and apparently you have to peel. It's supposed to be something like green pepper, right? So they say. Actually, we have, um, if you go and watch one of our videos from our time in New York City, we went to Los Tacos Numero Uno and we had, I chose a cactus taco and it was so good. So 
it won't be uh, tacos tonight, but it'll be tasty. So we're just enjoying our last dinner here at Soldier K in the Berry Highlands. Because it's our last little island. And tonight, probably around 11, we're gonna set sail. Go to Grand Bahama. And then leave the country. Oh, yummy. Look at that slimy cactus. Oh, uh, it looks like snot. <laughs> it's so sticky. <laughs> so I way overpilled them. I could have gotten rid of just the thorns and the roots, but I peeled the whole thing. It took quite a while. So now I'm putting that in a bowl and I'm gonna give it all a rinse to remove a little bit of that uh, snotty goodness. <laughs> Apparently it all goes away when you cook it. <laughs> and it tastes lemony delicious. <laughs> we shall see. I'm excited. Interesting mix, but uh, we work with what we have. Coricate hogfish, so that and hogfish with the cactus and some mac and cheese. The moment of truth. <laughs> It's tasty, but still a little slimy. I know, it's the first time cooking it, so I think there <clears throat> might be a few trials. It's kind of a shame I was looking forward to the cactus, but because, um, right, exactly what Coral said. The mac and cheese is wonderful, and so is the hogfish, but the cactus, it seems like if you don't cook it, or like quite a lot, so it's almost blackened on the outside, it gets, you don't get, get out of here. The seagulls here are really bad. They're really um, ballsy, I guess you could say. Um, and they get, they land right on the solar panel, literally two feet away from you. And they think it's okay to just scream at you. Give me food, give me food. And they really kind of frustrate me to be honest. So I'm trying to get one of them with a the stick in this string. Not that I really want to hurt it, but I want to teach it to stay off our boat because they keep sitting on our solar panel, shitting all over our solar panel, or pooping all over our outboard. Yeah, it gets really slimy and it's it's not just unappealing, but when you're chewing on it, it's kind of like, makes me gag a little. So I definitely want to try it again, but it needs to be cooked way more than what we thought initially. Well, that's the first time, first time trying it, so it can only get better from here. Yeah. Damn seagulls, come on, leave us alone. Didn't even feed them. Oh, you're going to say, I think it's the end of the day. 